You know, there's got to be a time when the Europeans stop stealing things from the black man. If it wasn't all of the ancient science and technology they developed that the European obviously stole from them, citation from Ghazi Kozo, then it's the very concept of man coming out of Africa in the first place. Europe was the birthplace of mankind and not Africa. Scientists find... Well, yeah, but these are going to be white scientists, aren't they? White Western scientists using the scientific method that doesn't even account for how a witch doctor calls down lightning. There's a, a place uh, in Kezer, in Mkabi Alihana, and they believe that through uh, the magic, the black magic, they call it black magic, they call it witchcraft to others, that you are able to send a lightning to strike someone. So can you explain that scientifically? Because it's, it's something that happens... <laughs> So the history of human evolution has been rewritten after scientists discovered that Europe was the birthplace of mankind and not Africa. Well, you know what the problem here is. Eurocentrism. <laughs> this is just typical Western chauvinism. Good grief. Currently, most experts believe our human lineage split from apes around 7 million years ago in Central Africa, where hominids remained for the next 5 million years before venturing further afield. But two fossils of an ape-like creature which had human-like teeth have been found in Bulgaria and Greece, dating to 7.2 million years ago. Oh, shit. The discovery of the creature named Grecopithecus Freybergi, Bergi? Yeah. And nicknamed El Greco by scientists proves that our ancestors already starting to evolve in Europe 200,000 years before the earliest African hominid. An international team of researchers say the findings entirely change the beginning of human history and place the last common ancestor of both chimpanzees and humans, the so-called missing link, in the Mediterranean region. At that time, climate change had turned Eastern Europe into an open savanna, which forced apes to find new food sources, sparking a shift towards bipedalism, researchers believe. The study changes the ideas related to the knowledge about the time and the place of the first steps of humankind. Grecopithecus is not an ape, he is a member of the tribe Hominins, and a direct ancestor of Homo. The food of the Grecopithecus was related to the rather dry and hard savanna region, unlike that of the recent great apes which are living in forests. Therefore, like humans, he has wide molars and a thick enamel. To some extent, this is a newly discovered missing link, but missing links will always, always exist because evolution is an infinite chain of subsequent forms. Probably, El Greco's face will resemble a great ape with shorter canines. Doesn't he look like a happy chap as well? Oh. The team analysed two known specimens of Grecopithecus freibergi, a lower jaw from Greece and an upper premolar tooth from Bulgaria. Using computer tomography, they were able to visualise the internal structures of the fossils and show that the roots of the premolars are widely fused. While great apes typically have two or three separate and diverging roots, the roots of Grecopithecus converge and are partially fused, a feature that is characteristic of modern humans, early humans and several, several pre-humans. The lower jaw has additional dental root features, suggesting the species was a hominid. The species was also found to be several hundred thousand years older than the oldest African hominid, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, which was found in Chad. We were surprised by our results, as prehumans were obviously known only from sub-Saharan Africa. This dating allows us to move the human-chimpanzee split into the Mediterranean region. During the period, the Mediterranean Sea went through frequent periods of drying up completely, forming a land bridge between Europe and Africa, and allowing apes and early hominids to pass between the continents. The team believed that the evolution of hominids may have, had, may have been driven by dramatic environmental changes, which sparked the formation of the North African Savara more than 7 million, 7 million years ago, and pushed the species further north. They found large amounts of Saharan sand in layers dating from the period, suggesting that it may lay much further north than today. Professor Bon added, Our findings may eventually change our ideas about the origin of humanity. I personally don't think the descendants of Grecopithecus died out. They may have spread to Africa later. The split of chimps and humans was a single event. Our data supports the view that this split was happening in the Eastern Mediterranean and not in Africa. If accepted, this theory will indeed alter the very beginning of human history. However, some experts were more skeptical about the findings. Retired anthropologist and author Dr. Peter Andrews, formerly at the Natural History Museum of London, said, It is possible that the human lineage originated in Europe, but very substantial fossil evidence places the origin in Africa, including several partial skeletons and skulls. I would be hesitant about using a single character from an isolated fossil to set against the evidence from Africa. 
Well, I mean, I, I have no idea what's uh, correct or not about this, but I do know that there are going to be a lot of very pissed off activists if it turns out that man did not in fact come from Africa and in fact came from Europe. That makes, that, I mean, that makes human beings in general colonizers, evil, evil colonizers from the indigenous stock of Europe. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, this is, this is not going to go down well if this is true. They are, they're not going to be happy. By you doing that, you are disrespecting the sacredness of the space. 